Hey guys, it's me again. Welcome to my home here in Orange County, California. Um, if you're new to my channel or if you missed last week's video, we are talking about q and I kind of just spilled everything about me in case you wanted to know. Um, I don't normally do that. I normally like to talk about products, tips, hair, hair extensions, all that stuff. But I wanted to share a little bit more about me since I'm welcoming you here into my house in Orange County, California. Sometimes I talk so fast that my words just like a blur. I'm like, there's a little, it's in the house of California. <laughs> um, anyways, welcome to my home. started with today's video I am gonna talk to you guys about um, pretty much like filters I use do you Photoshop how do you like how are you editing your photos and things like that I do I have two different styles because I have two different Instagram accounts I have my hair account which is natural beauty row extensions and which is a hair extension method that I created and um, if you want more information about that click on the link just give me my plug um, so I have my Instagram account for hair and then I have my Instagram account that's DKW Styling. That's just like fashion and lifestyle um, and things like that. I blog, so if you want more information on my blog, you can also click the link and find out more, more information there. Um, but I wanted to share with you guys that whether you're a hairstylist, you're a blogger, you just love beauty and fashion and all that good stuff, I wanted to just share, um, kind of go through on my phone, like how I edit photos or what I do and things like that. And then I wanted to show like what camera I use at the salon, kind of go from there. Um, so first I'll talk about my camera. Um, I, my photos that I use on my blog, I, people are always like, is someone just following you around with like a camera? Like I don't get it. Um, <laughs> no, most bloggers use a professional blogging photographer or their husband or significant other happens to be a photographer. Um, those ones tend to get the best photos I think because they're super comfortable with this person and they're always with them and then yes their husband literally is following them around with the camera. <laughs> For the rest of us we book um, usually blogger photographers and we typically for me like I'll set up a shoot and I'll do four looks and then I'll kind of release them throughout the next couple weeks. Um, blogging is very much kind of a, a passion and a job and a hobby all in one. So to get those really clean pictures that you're seeing on a lot of bloggers or just Instagrammers, those are taken with a professional camera, not specifically this one. This is one I use at my salon. So if you are looking to get into blogging, um, what you can do is like when I was trying to find a photographer for my blog, I just started looking for bloggers in my area and then I usually they'll tag who they're using. So I would like tap on the photo and they're like, oh, you're using so-and-so or so-and-so. And then I'd reach out to him, hey, I'm a blogger too. Like, I'd love to take photos with you. So that's a good way to find a blogger photographer if you're looking to, to go about starting a blog and things like that. Um, for the salon, like I, I still take photos with my iPhone, to be honest with you. The cameras on the iPhones have really like gone up and I feel like you can get a really good photo just from your iPhone, but I do like things to look a little bit more crisp and a little bit more clean. And if I'm being 100% honest, when you take um, a hair before and after with with a good camera, you can see your work really well. So like for me, I like to like take a photo and I use it as like constructive criticism <laughs> to my own work, I guess you could say. I'm like, ooh, this hair needs to be brought in, this color needs to be here. And I kind of, I don't know, when you shoot with a good camera, you can, it just makes your stuff look a little bit more, you know, clean and a little bit more professional. And I don't even shoot with a fancy camera. This is the Canon Rebel. I don't know if you guys can see that. Um, I've tried fancier cameras, and to be honest with you, like, I just get overwhelmed, and I have to remember what, like, when you get really busy, you have to just focus on what your niche is, and you can't worry about, like, being the jack of all trades, I guess you could say. So it's important to kind of understand photos and how you like them, but like you don't necessarily need to be a photographer. You could start with something as basic as the Canon Rebel and just start playing around with it. I typically shoot in manual, which is this little M right here. Um, and really the only things that you'll need to know about photography, if you're just, if you're a hairstylist and you just want to play around with it for your before and afters, um, the only thing I tell, like when I'm teaching my students and I have classes and they're like, Danielle, what camera do you use? I show them the exact camera and then I just tell them, 
The only thing I play around with is the white balance and the ISO. The white balance, I always like to keep it right in the middle because white balance is whether it shows up cool or warm. And when you're taking photos of hair, specifically like hair color, you really want it to represent um, true to what it actually looks like. So um, a lot of times I like to shoot in natural lighting and I put my camera in manual. I make sure my white balance is right in the center. And then the little button here is called ISO. Can you guys, ooh, can you guys see that little ISO button? So this will um, open up your shutter speed a little bit. So if you take a photo and then you're like, ah, oh, it's a little dark. It may be just a matter of adjusting your shutter speed depending on like what time of day it is. My salon is in uh, Laguna Beach, it's right off Pacific Coast Highway. We have tons of natural lighting, however, sometimes it gets darker and I have to kind of, you know, work, work around it and adjust my ISO. Um, another trick I'll give you, hair stylists, because a lot of us work later hours or in the winter when we don't have that natural lighting. Um, I actually prefer more of a cell phone shot then and a ring light, or I'll use my ca professional camera sometimes, but I'll kind of use a, a ring light. And you can get a ring light on, if you don't know what it is, I'll post a link for this below the, the, this video. Um, I use the Diva ring light. You can get those on Amazon or pretty much anywhere. I think they're like $250. They're not bad, but they're definitely worth it. They're good too for if you want to be a beauty blogger. We're actually using a ring light right now. Just makes your skin look clearer and creamier and things like that. So if you're gonna be some any kind of a beauty blogger or you're just gonna get on camera, I definitely would recommend getting a ring light. Just more light is always good. Um, okay, so that's pretty much it as far as like my camera, what I'm using, grab a ring light. The other thing I'll go over with you guys really quick is I'm gonna just show you some favorite apps and little tricks that I do on my cell phone. Okay, so one of the probably most used um, apps for like bloggers or pretty much anybody on social media is this Facetune. Um, this was a photo I took of myself, lovely little selfie. This was with no filter, but I did have the ring light in front of me, and you can see that it just kind of brightens up your skin and your hair color and things like that. Um, honestly, even with my hair photos or with a selfie, I will always smooth a little bit, but I think people, the trick to doing any kind of tweaking with your photos is less is more. So I hit the smooth button, and I just kind of like randomly just do a little bit. You don't want to look too overly creamed, I guess you could say. But just a little bit, I think, is amazing because it makes your skin look all flawless. So, and then you can push this little button here and it just, it just kind of smooths everything out a little bit. I don't know. Um, if you want to make your eyes pop a little bit, you can hit the little detail button and I'll just barely tap the eye part a little bit. And it just barely, you can see the ring light in my eyes, but that's why I like shooting sometimes with, with a ring light. Um, and then I'll do that with sometimes with client photos as well. I might kind of uh, adjust them a little bit, like smooth out their skin and things like that. There's also, let's see if I can find another. Sometimes too, you can, I feel like photography is all about the angle. And maybe you have like an angle of yourself that you don't love. like. Sometimes, maybe, well, this is a bad example because I have a sleeve on, but I feel like every girl's always complaining about their arm. Um, again, less is more. You don't want people to meet you and think like, oh my God, you don't look anything like your photo. So you hit refine and you can do little things like tuck in your arm a little bit or say you had like, you're in a swimsuit and you have like a side thing here. You can like tuck that in a little bit. That one's a good one. Again, less is more. And any blogger or girl that's on social media that tells you they don't do that is totally lying. <laughs> so that's probably one of the tricks I use if I'm like, ooh, my arm looks big there, or that's just a weird angle. You can kind of tuck and smooth a little bit. I was trying to find one more photo where you could literally like remove people from your photo. Okay, so here's one of me in my swimsuit and like see these little tiny people in the background and you're like, geez, you just really ruined in the shot. Then you can go in and push patch and you can completely remove that person out of the shot. This guy looks like hunched over. Let's get rid of him too. See if we can. You wanna try to get like the wave and everything lined up pretty good. Let's see. Ta-da, and if you're from far away, you can't see it and then you don't have any random people in your shot. So that's, oop, look, there they are, oop, little guys. That one's not that obvious, but literally sometimes I've had like a full on like person sitting right here and I've been able <laughs> to remove them from the shot. So 
That's what a good one I like for Facetune, or those are some tricks I like to use on Facetune. Another one a lot of um, social media gals or uh, bloggers use is Snapseed. Oops. Nope, not Spotify, Snapseed. And the reason I like this one is I feel like you can do a lot more, you can just do a lot, a lot, do a lot more detail. Like say for example, I wanted to darken my background a little bit. I mean, you can go in, there's so many options of those. So you can go in and tune image, you can brighten it, you can darken it, you can do so many things. Like what if I wanted to brighten up me a little bit? But then say I wanted to specifically darken my background. You can go into selective and you can literally pinpoint the spots in the photo that you want to be darker. So things like that are like fun to do and like play around with. Um, that one is snap seed. And then here's, here's, a, here's an example of what I'll do sometimes on hair photos. So say I take a, a photo of her and I'm like, oh, it's kind of dark. Well, first I'm gonna go in. Again, you don't really wanna change. This is a before. I try not to alter like my afters too much, but say I'm gonna brighten that up just a little bit. And then say I wanna brighten up the background a little bit. So you can either go in and use, they have a brush tool um, right here, and you can literally go in and like brush with your hand and that will brighten up you can, you can kind of see how that's brightening that up. Or say for example, you can go back to, where is that, selective, and you can hit the area and you can brighten up. See how that just brightened up my whole background and it kind of made it look a little more even. So that's a trick a lot of times I'll do for my hair photos because I don't necessarily want to do too much to the actual color of the hair so it's a true representation of kind of like how she came in and then that was her before. And then sometimes with my photos, I'll have people come stand. This is a wall in my salon and I'll have them stand off the wall just a little bit so they're in natural lighting so you can kind of see how pretty the color turned out. Um, and I like the contrast between like the white wall and a little bit of like the salon background. Um, so that's kind of what I've been doing on my hair Instagram. Um, I'm trying to think of other little tricks and tips. Oh, there's a new app that a ton of bloggers use that I just got. Visco, I think is how you say it, and it has some really, really cool filters. So say for example, like you can go in and you can pick, I bought, if you get this, buy the upgraded version. If you just buy, if you just get the free one, it doesn't have all the filters. But say you want your Instagram feed to all look very cohesive, you can go in and pick, you could literally do have everything be the same filter so that everything flows really, really good. Again, I would only use this for my DKW or my fashion stuff. I wouldn't use this for hair photos, but this one's a fun one to just play around with. It has tons of really, really cool um, filters. And you can also go in and brighten, and let's see if I can show you on this one. I just got this app, so I barely know how to use it. Nope. Oh, there we go. So you can like, if you wanna, you can also brighten the picture in here, do exposure and things like that. Okay, the last thing I wanna show you guys. So here is my um, Instagram account and I try to keep my feed pretty clean and sometimes I'll just manually edit even in Instagram. So say for example, we'll just pick, we'll just pick that one again. So I might, kind of just go in and instead of picking a filter within Instagram, I might go in, oh, the other thing that's cool too is you can pick a filter in Instagram and if it's too much, bring it down a little bit and then I'll even go in and edit here a little bit and just play around with just manually going in and I'll like reduce the shadows a little bit, see how that kind of makes me pop a little bit more. Um, but just kind of like play around, you can, if you, um, I think it's important to have a really similar color scheme with inside your Instagram. So like you might want like less tone, you want more, well that's bad. <laughs> but you can kind of play around with even the tone of your photos so that everything looks really clean. Okay you guys, so that's pretty much it for all the apps that I'm using. Hopefully that helped you out a little bit. Um, again, I think the trick with doing any kind of editing or if you're trying to build a business or any kind of social media, make sure everything's super clean and cohesive and kind of stick a, choose a style and sort of stick with it, I guess you could say. Um, if you scroll back at my feed, I kind of am like all over the place and then the further down you get in my feed, everything starts to look a little bit more cleaner because you kind of like just go 
all in and you don't know what you're doing in the beginning and you just kind of try different things and you're trying to find your own vibe and your own style and things like that. So don't worry, like if you're feeling intimidated or anything like that, I would just encourage you to just do it and you'll figure it out along the way. Um, the other thing too is camera angle is really important. Like I think if, you, if you're gonna start shooting with a professional blogger, photographer, just kind of figure out what angle you like. And I always ask my photographer, hey, does this look good? Does this look good? I like feedback. And, and so you can get more comfortable doing it. I, you would think, like I've been doing blogging for the last five years and kind of being on camera, and you would think I would be like super comfortable with it, but I still sometimes feel sort of awkward. <laughs> so um, you just kind of have to figure out what you like. And I think one of the biggest tips I could give you guys if you're trying to start uh, kind of your lifestyle or blog or Instagram following or whatever is everything should just look kind of easy breezy and sort of candid. Um, I feel like when I look back if I could do anything different or if I could coach newbies I'd be like I think I was too posed and too serious and I think you need to just like uh, have fun with it and just be candid and your shots don't need to always just be a selfie you know you just kind of need a lot of movement and just look really like hey, I'm just out and about grabbing some flowers or some groceries or some just day-to-day -day life, you know what I mean? So have fun with it, be candid, and um, so that your Instagram and your photos reflect that. And then if you are a hairstylist and you're taking photos of your work, one of the key points I could give you is lighting is everything. I literally bought my studio in Laguna Beach based on the natural lighting alone because I love working with natural lighting and I love uh, photographing hair in natural lighting. So kind of play around and find your lighting. Obviously direct sun for hair colors is not good. Too shadowy is not good. So just kind of start playing around with photography and lighting and things like that because I can promise you as a hairstylist it will help you become that much better of a hairstylist because you'll you'll be able to actually look back at your work and think okay I need to blend this, I need to do that and it will help you become a better professional. So anyways that's my long rant about um, apps, photography, social media, and all that good stuff. Um, tune in next week. I share a tip every Tuesday, Tuesday Tips. And don't forget to tune into the blog, dkwstyling.com, for daily posts Monday through Friday. Uh, we'll see you guys here next Tuesday, and don't forget to subscribe. Bye.